bravery, courage, duty, chivalry. The ideal man is a father, a husband, a comrade, and a patriot. A real man is a soldier. 1914, the beginning of the Great War. Tensions between European nations have finally split the continent into two. August 4th of that year, Britain declares war on Germany. As a dominion of Britain, Canada finds itself involved in a bloodshed across the ocean. On the home front, men are rallied to carve a place out for their relatively new country in an international battlefield. In the context of voluntary enlistment, which was in place until conscription supplemented it in 1917, Canada needed to convince men to willingly join the war effort. When Canadian recruiting officers tried to convince Canadians to go to war uh, during the First World War, uh, they uh, appealed to, I guess, uh, both a sense of patriotism on the part of the soldiers, as well as uh, a sense of masculine duty. And what that basically meant was that soldiers uh, and Canadians in general shared a belief that uh, it was the responsibility of men to defend the country, uh, to defend Canadian interests, and that meant going to war, joining the Canadian uh, um, Expeditionary Force. Canada needed to make the war look appealing, and advertising was the way to do it. Recruitment became breeding ground for all sorts of propaganda practices. In a pre-radio society, Posters were one of the most effective ways to manipulate masses. Posters were spared of the true graphic images of the war. Instead, they asserted symbols that citizens easily responded to. A military hat, a comrade, an enemy. The soldier at war, the soldier on the battlefield as he fearlessly looks into the face of danger. The soldier as the hero. It was easy for recruiting officers to appeal to Canadians and to convince them to go overseas uh, by telling them that it was their masculine duty to do so, uh, and uh, by implying kind of implicitly uh, that not joining up uh, would mean uh, that they weren't doing their duty as men. The idea was that if one was a good man and citizen of Canada, one must enlist. But who is this man being a good man for? Which cause is honorable enough to be worth fighting for, gives a man glory if he succeeds, and justifies the sacrifice of a man's death? Propaganda played with the opposition between the male and the female genders, as understood at the time. The message was, be a man, fight, because there are women in your life who need to be protected. Fight for her. The Fight for Her poster was directed at Irish Canadian Rangers, drawing on notions of motherhood and family values. By fighting, a man was fulfilling his role as a husband, son, or father. Messages such as this one were common. They portrayed women as the objects soldiers fought to defend and as the rewards only heroes dared to desire. The idea of the woman thus becomes both incentive and reward the reason for the ultimate sacrifice. It is important to note that not only were these ideals of chivalrous protection presented in regards to women, they also appeared in a nationalistic context. Messages such as, Britain, she has given you peaceful years, and in regards to Canada, she needs you now, were also common. We have examined what motivated men to join the war effort, but women were also confronted with similar pressures. Just as men were asked to sacrifice their life for their country, women were asked to sacrifice their men. Hindering the war effort was considered a selfish act. Complaints such as this one about a mother who had two strapping fine sons but was too selfish to let either one enlist were not uncommon. Everyone, regardless of gender, was asked to contribute to the war in the way that they could. Men by enlisting, and women by letting their men go. Um, 
There's different opinions on the role that women played in the recruiting process. Some historians argue that women played a very subtle role in the background, uh, kind of pushing and prodding men to go by uh, uh, trying to convince them uh, that it was their duty, by reminding them uh, that it was important uh, that they uh, do their duty to their country, uh, to their family, and that they uh, try and uh, um, maintain, I guess, their uh, social status by, uh, by joining the Canadian Expeditionary Force. The question is, what was the extent of women's involvement in recruiting practices during the First World War? Were they only ideological, based on societal views of a man's and a woman's role and duty? Or did women actively involve themselves in convincing men to go? An example that examines that question is the Order of the White Feather. It was established in 1914 by Admiral Charles Penrose Fitzgerald with the purpose to publicly humiliate men by women for not enlisting. The idea came from The Four Feathers, a story by A.E.W. Mason published in 1902. Of military ideology, it focuses on the main character's cowardice in resigning duty. White feathers are given to him by friends, the symbol publicly addressing his cowardly act. The Order of the White Feather took on this practice, which involved women seeking out men without uniform and giving them a white feather. The public humiliation and shame were often too much to bear and would be sufficient to get a man to enlist. The White Feather campaign, I think, is uh, one of those stories from the First World War that gets repeated often. Uh, and I think the research of a number of historians has shown in, in recent years that it is true that women did, across the British Empire, hand out white feathers uh, in an attempt to try and shame men into joining. The reality is, though, that that campaign, such as it existed, ended by about the Battle of the Somme in 1916. And you don't really see that being used beyond the summer of 1916 in any kind of major way. When examined, the pressures women put on men to enlist were quite significant. Whether they were subtle in the form of internalized gender roles, or avert, such as the Order of the White Feather. They served to present the idea that going to war was the only option. However, just as the ideals of manhood are false, men were to discover that the ideals of battle, which was presented as proof of manhood, were also false. The First World War was to become one of the deadliest and bloodiest battles the world ever saw, where death, shell shock, and problems reintegrating into society were more prominent than heroic returns and happily ever afters.